Oh, hello, 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 my friends. Scotty J here, back again with another episode of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, and Nine Doors. Now, as you can see by our lovely cursor right here, last time we got the knife ending. So now, what we get to do is we will start the game again from the beginning, and uh, we'll try to make some different decisions and see if we can get some different stuff to happen. Now, uh, for your sake, I will not be replaying through anything we've already seen, but I will reference either what episodes to check out to kind of re-equip yourself with the story, or I'll talk a little bit about it when I come back from a break. So with that, let's get the show on the road, shall we? See you in a second. All right, and we are back. So we've escaped from the room. We met everyone out in the main hall again. Uh, the ninth man went cuckoo and blew himself up. Oof. And yeah, now we've talked about the rooms. Snake read the note to us, and now we are deciding what rooms to go into. Uh, I figure I'll try here, see if that gives us a little bit of context. You kind of get re-familiarized with the situation at hand, and we'll roll from there, shall we? All right, let's go. Junpei had to ask himself if the teams were what he really wanted. Beyond Door 5 was what remained of the ninth man. He never wanted to see that thing again, but something in him said it would be unwise to not examine the corpse even a little further. Of course, if he went through Door 5, he wouldn't be able to go with Lotus and Santa. True. It would be possible for him to bring June with him through door five, but that would mean she would have to see that horrific carnage that waited there. Junpei didn't want that. Junpei was torn. Should he stay silent and go through door four? Or should he stop them all and insist on door five? As he turned his options over and over in his head, Ace spoke up. All right then. It seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? He began to walk towards door five. Clover and Snake followed seven a short distance behind. Junpei, which door do you want to go through? All right, so now we did door four last time. Today, let's do door five. Hey, wait! Junpei's cry echoed across the room. The four people walking towards the door stopped and turned back to look at him. I want to go through door five too. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when June spoke up. What? What are you saying, Jumpy? If you're going through that door, then I'm going with you. He turned around to look at her. No, you can't. I can't take you with me. Wh why? Well, you're... You know what's in there, don't you? Are you sure you want to see that? Hmm. June opened her mouth as if to say something, but instead closed it again and looked at the floor. She may felt an ache in his chest at her clear distress, but the choice was not his to make. There was nothing else he could do. Junpei turned away from June, doing his best to silence his turbulent emotions. Please, let me go into door five. Seven scratched his head and looked at the young man. Man, now we're right back to where we started. You know that? Junpei's bracelet number is five, correct? If we're going to add Junpei, then we need to subtract five from the rest of us. Snake turned to Ace. Ace, please take good care of Clover. Oh, uh, all right. That's, uh, fine. One plus four equals five. Don't go away! You need to listen to me, Clover. Go to door four with the others. No! Don't be so selfish! Snake's tone was harsh. Tears welled up in Clover's eyes. She bit her lip and did her best to fight them off. Snake's expression softened, and he put his arms around Clover. He held her close and whispered something into her ear. You'll be fine. Just relax. It looked as though he whispered two or three more words. Whatever they were, Junpei didn't hear them. He couldn't help but wonder what the other man had said. Snake pulled back from his sister, his eyes kind and inquiring. Oh, okay, I understand. Her voice was barely audible from where Junpei stood. Before long, new teams were assembled. Those going through door five, seven, Snake, and Junpei. 7 plus 2 plus 5 equals 14. 1 plus 4 equals 5. Those going to door 4. Lotus, Santa, June, Ace, and Clover. 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 plus 4 equals 22. 2 plus 2 equals 4. 7, Snake, and Junpei scan their bracelets in, in quick succession. The screen of the red showed three asterisks. All right, let's go. Junpei glanced around one last time his hand resting on the lever of the red. Okay. Please be careful. Concern was written plainly across her face. 
Junpei looked her in the eye and gave what he hoped was a reassuring nod. He pulled the lever. With the sharp clang of a lock releasing, the door swung open. Ahead of them, in the small hallway, were the pitiful remains of the ninth man. For a moment, Junpei froze. Try as he might, his eyes would not leave the corpse, and his feet would not leave the floor. Seven two seemed paralyzed. Snake, on the other hand, seemed unconcerned. He walked calmly down the bloody hallway, and only stopped when he realized his companions were not following. Do you intend to kill me? I assume you haven't forgotten this door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? He hadn't even bothered to turn around. His head was, at most, slightly cocked towards one shoulder. Junpei and Seven looked at one another, nodded, and threw themselves through the door. As they did, a cold tone sounded from the left wrist of all three men. Seven and Junpei looked down at their bracelets. On both of them and on snakes, a red skull had flickered to life. The detonator had begun its countdown. They had scarcely processed this information when... <gasps> the door's closing. It's all bloody, too. Yikes. With a metallic slam, the numbered doors behind them had swung shut. Unless they could find the device that would deactivate the detonators on their wrists, they would not be leaving this hallway. Hey! Where's the dead? The fear and urgency in Seven's face reflected what all three of them felt. Jupe spun around, searching desperately for the dead. He found it, easily enough. It was on the wall, next to the closed door, labeled five. Found it! Right here! As he yelled, he struck the scanner with his hand. The other two scrambled to follow suit. As soon as they finished, Snake threw the lever down. Whew. Hmm. Hmm. Ugh. Phew. Well, it looks like it stopped. As he spoke, Jubei wiped the sweat from his forehead with a trembling hand. Goddamn thing's gonna give me a heart attack. A muscle stood out in Seven's neck, and the corners of his mouth were twitching. Jumpy, are you all right? Are you guys okay? They could hear anxious voices, muffled but distinct, from the other side of the door. Yeah, we're fine. The detonators have been deactivated. They heard relieved sighs, and even through the door, the three men could feel the tension disperse. All right, we're moving on. Be careful, okay? Okay. Sure thing. They heard footsteps moving away, and before long, they were alone again. Junpei looked around. The hallway hit a dead end, twenty or thirty feet from where they stood. A thick iron wall blocked their way. Try as they might to force it, the wall refused to move. To the left, however, was a wooden door that looked positively inviting by comparison. In the middle of it was a plaque that read, First Class. A first class cabin, huh? Well, it seems like it. Let's have a look then, shall we? Without hesitation, Snake opened the door and stepped inside. Seven followed closely behind. Junpei moved to follow them as well, but... He stopped, just short of the threshold, and looked back, not knowing why. Lying in the small hallway was a man's body, or at least what was left of it. He tried hard to avoid looking at the grisly scene, but it just wouldn't leave his mind. What had once been a man's internal organs now looked very much like vomit, as though someone had chewed up and spit out the better part of his torso. It was hideous, but worse still, it was cruel. It was hard to believe that the thing on the floor had once been a human. The black pool of thick blood, the lumps of glistening flesh spread across the floor, the awkward, twisted tangle of shredded intestines. The head wrenched to some grotesque, unnatural position. The man's glasses lay next to his head. The lenses were cracked and the frames bent and distorted. And next to the glasses lay a bracelet, the number nine, still displayed on its face. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you must escape from the ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, or detects its wearer's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. 
<laughs> Suddenly, Junpei felt his stomach convulse and a knot of muscle gripped his throat. He clapped his hands over his mouth and ran to the first class cabin. The atmosphere changed immediately. The room was gorgeous, and despite the apparent age of the ship, none the worse for wear. He looked around. Seven and Snake were nowhere to be seen. There were two doors on the right side of the room. He opened the one to his right and went through. On the other side of the door was a short hallway. He jogged down the hallway, opened the door at the other end, and peeked through. There they were, to his right, busy examining something. He stepped through the door and walked towards them. What's up? Check this out. We found this thing here at the door. The red light's on. Does that mean it's locked? Hmm, so I would assume. Is there any way out? Uh, we looked around a little, but other than this door, we didn't find any. So you're telling me that unless we can open this door... Yes, we won't be going anywhere. Junpei stepped away from the door and looked around the room. The room they were in looked like a bedroom. He figured the room he'd originally entered was the living room, or whatever passed for one on a ship. Alright, let's find a way to open this door. Come on, guys! Alright, seek a way out. Hey, hey, welcome to the first class cabin. So as you can see here, we have a couple of fun spots. There's the bedroom here. There's the hallway as discussed. The living room there. Looks like two bathrooms, or a uh, toilet room and a tub slash wash. And then two closets, looks like. Also, for the fun part, we get to hang out with Snake and Seven, whom, if I recall, we haven't done a room with either of them yet. So hey, this should be fun. Let's look around. Oh, bed. Hey, there's a thing. Ooh, a score plate. Hey. Oh, someone's time to talk. Took Junpei by surprise. Snake, usually so calm and collected, suddenly began to move. He stared about the room almost frantically, clearly looking for something. No, Junpei thought, well, not staring. After all, he was blind. Blind or not, Snake was clearly attempting to do something. At last, Junpei could no longer contain his curiosity. What are you doing? Snake waited a moment before answering. I heard something. Strange. Something strange? Ah, well, never mind. It doesn't seem to be anything suspicious. I don't wish to toot my own horn, but my auditory senses are considerably more advanced than those of most humans. I notice even the slightest of noises. Right, are you going to tell me you can hear a needle drop from a mile away? Ha! Oh no, such a thing would be impossible. However, by listening to the sound of footsteps and breathing, as well as the sounds echoing off the environment, I can locate most objects. Oh yeah, that's right. When Clover fell on the big staircase a little while ago, you were at her side immediately. So that was... Hmm. Yes. I could hear it happening. In fact, I could run quite fast. Certainly as fast as you. And should someone attempt to start a fight with me, I'm quite confident that I could defeat them. Chipe was somewhat taken aback by this revelation. He stared at Snake, skeptically. Mm, don't believe me, do you? Care to give me a try? Must warn you, you'll no doubt regret it. Oh. <laughs> well, I suppose that's enough playing around. Let's resume our search, shall we? With a small, self-satisfied smile, Snake turned and walked away from Junpei. Snake wants to fight. A white desk. Feels kind of fancy. Very fancy. Ooh. Oh, it's totally a table with a mirror. Ah, yes, you know, that sort of thing is known as a vanity. Were you aware of that, Junpei? Of course, vanity also refers to self-love, conceit, and narcissism. As such, you could say that every day when a woman looks into one of these, she stares at her own conceit and narcissism. Doesn't that strike you as terribly sad? Hmm, that's a lot. Hey, there's a ship map. What's this? This isn't a score. Is this a map of the ship? A map? There's a map of the ship here. Yeah, yeah. Then I imagine it will prove very helpful. You best hold on to it, Junpei. Oh, okay. Sweet. Now possible to use the map screen. Sweet. So yeah, there's the map for this side. One over here. All right, we have two doors. Let's head to this one to start. Mm. 
Let's go back seven. I assume he's in here. It's a heavy piece of paper that's been folded in half. It has score written on the front of it. Hmm, score. That's gotta mean musical score. If that's true, then the score we just found was probably in here. At least, at some point. Interesting. Uh, there's some sort of antique desk. Makes sense though, I guess. This whole room's full of antiques. You can get a nice handful of cash for all this stuff in here. Huh, a chair? Somebody spent a lot of time carving the legs of this chair. It'll snap like a twig if Seven sits on it though. Mind your own business! Damn, roasting seven. It's covered for musical source getting on the table. Alright, nothing of note there. Hmm, there's a couple of lights on the wall here. Oh. We got fire! There's an iron grate in front of the fireplace. There's something behind it. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we'll need something to put that fire out then. Hey, there's a vase. A vase? Vases? Anyway. I get it. You're going to use the vase, right? That's pretty clever, Junpei. We just got to fill this thing with water. Yeah, we do. Let's go to the bathroom. This one. Hey, there's water in the tub. That's up full of gross, cloudy water. All right. Shouldn't be too hard to fill this vase up. Woohoo! Now then, pop on out. Around and around. There we are. Water. All right, time to put this fire out. About time, buddy. Let's do it. Here we go. Haha, <laughs> good job. Another success. That fire didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Seven's the best, by the way. All right, I'll just pull this out now. I don't want to get burned, so let's pull it out with the sleeves. Woohoo, we got the score plate. All right. As Junpei took the plate into his pocket, Seven cried out. Stumbled, his balance lost. He threw out a hand and caught the wall in time to steady himself and avoid the floor. But his face was flushed, and he looked startled. Hey, Seven, what the hell was that? Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I just felt a little dizzy, that's all. Seven rubbed a couple fingers across his brow, then shook his head as if to clear it. What the hell's wrong with me? First memory loss, now I'm getting dizzy for no reason? Hmm? Memory? Loss? Jimei couldn't hide the surprise in his voice. Seven, for his part, seemed unconcerned. Oh, right, guess I hadn't told you, have I? I told the rest of them, but that must have been before you showed up. Well, the long and short of it is that I don't remember Jack before I woke up here. I didn't realize I hadn't told you. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You're talking about amnesia, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, why are you an amnesiac? What happened to you? If I knew that, I wouldn't really be one now, would I, Junpei? Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Junpei paused for a moment and stared at Seven. Are you telling me the truth? Huh? Well, you look pretty calm for someone who doesn't remember anything. If you really got amnesia, shouldn't you be, like, upset or confused or something? Well, sure, I mean, I was pretty confused when I woke up down on D-Deck. But that was a while ago. I've had some time to get used to it. After a while, I figured it wasn't worth the trouble of worrying about it. After all, why worry about something I can't change? Well, people usually don't stay amnesiacs forever. I figure it'll work itself out eventually. That's... that's it? That's it. Hmm. Alright, that's enough talking for now. Let's get back to work. Seven gave Junpei a look the younger man wasn't sure how to interpret, and turned to walk away. Somehow, though, Junpei didn't find his reassurances very... Reassuring? Hmm. Interesting. Anything of note in this closet? Hey! There's a suitcase made of leather of rich mahogany. Well, shoot! Looks like there's nothing in it. How about the one below it? It's a leather suitcase. Dang, nothing in here! Anything in this thing? Hey, there's a score plate for G! Alright. Let's go to the toilet. Anything in the toilet room? It's a toilet. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anything in the toilet or the tank. Damn. Nothing in the bowl. Anything on the paper? Uh, there's some toilet paper on the wall there. Nothing that looks suspicious, though. Okay. Well, I guess nothing of note in here, then. Anything else in here? Oh, hey, we can probably drain the water out of this now. Man, this water's dirty. Can't see more than four inches or so. Can't see anything down there. Hmm. Do you think... Think what? 
Let's drain it. There's a plug at the end of this chain. All right, why don't we just drain this water? Yeah, good plan. All right, where's that thing? A good tug ought to be enough to get it out. Huh? Hey, there's one. The D plate. Nice, nice, nice. And there we are, in the mirror. What a pair. A college kid and a terrifying giant of a man in a beanie. Stuck in a cramped bathroom. With this beast of a man. What would my parents say? Hmm? Something wrong, Junpei? You look real sad all of a sudden. Oh, oh no, nothing. <laughs> Junpei, you're a jerk. Anyway. So then I assume the other closet has our last score piece. Suitcases. A leather suitcase. Hmm, there's nothing inside. I can tell just by the weight. And it makes no noise when shaken. Fair. Hey, there we go. Score plate. And what is this little doodad? Hmm, the safe is locked. It's one of those, uh, dial locks. Doesn't have a key. We just need to get the dials in the right place and it'll open. Did you find anything, Seven? Nope. How about you, Snake? Hmm, I also found nothing. Hmm. Well, all right. Well, I think with this, four might be enough to play the piano? Let's give it a shot. The music stand. Seems as good a place as any to put this music we found. Just gotta put the ceramic plates on the bottom and stack the glass plates on top of it. All right, good. Sweet, now I can play the music. Mm, Junpei, would you be so kind as to play the piano? I am unable to, as you see. Mm, I sure, I shouldn't need to tell you, but the keys in this piano are not what you might expect them to be. C won't be C, D won't be D, and so forth. You must listen carefully to determine which keys to strike. Do you understand? Yeah. All right, let's give it a, this a shot. Woohoo! Be out of time. All right, so we have to try to hit the keys to make this sound, or make these sounds, which I believe it's just the same four notes. No, it might not be. Oh yeah, no, it is. Okay. So we gotta find which keys equal what notes. So let's hit you. Hey, we're right. Hey. Well, that was easier than expected. Ah, no, rats. All right, we gotta do it again. One more time. Now you are... That was tense. Excellent, we got it. Oh, that's nice. And we're done. Music's not my forte, but wait, what was that noise? Junpei, we did it. Looks like it worked. I had something unlocked over by the exit. Let's go. Good plan. Stand, bow, and be seated. Well, I guess he hasn't forgotten that. At least Snake thinks it's funny. <laughs> oh, yes, I suppose that was the classroom bell, wasn't it? I don't imagine that was what Zero was thinking of, however. No, no, Zero almost certainly meant to suggest uh, Westminster, not middle school. Westminster? Mm, the palace in London that plays host these days to the Houses of Parliament. You've heard of Big Ben, the famous clock tower, yes? Big Ben plays that very collection of notes on the hour. London? Capital of England, huh? At any rate, the door is now unlocked. Let's leave this place immediately. All right then, you heard him. Let's get on out of here. All right, let's go. Woohoo! We did it. He came out of the door into a long, straight hallway. He paused for a moment and turned around to look behind him. Seven was bent over, apparently doing something to the door. What's he up to? Chupe had spoke more or less to himself, but apparently Seven had heard anyway. The larger man stood up and turned to Junpei. I was just uh, putting one of those plates in there. 
We ought to keep the door from locking again. Now we can come back here anytime we want, right? Ah, now why would you want to come back here? Snake was a reasonable one. Seven thought about it for a moment before he answered. I might like to play a little piano. Piano? Oh, come on, let's get moving. We ain't out of this yet. Without waiting for an answer, Seven started off down the hallway. Snake shrugged, sighed, and quietly followed Seven. That's a lie, Junpei thought to himself. He had difficulty enough believing Seven could play the piano, but even if he could, the piano they'd just left was largely useless. The keyboard had been completely scrambled. If Seven wanted to come back, it would be unlikely he intended to do so to play the piano. But if that was the case, why would he want to leave the door unlocked? Hmm. Junpei frowned, took one last look at the door, and then walked away towards his companions. After some time in the hallway, they merged into a larger, more open area. A large metal grate, like the door of a jail, divided it. They shook it for a while, but as they'd expected, it did not move. Behind the grate were two elevators. From so far away, however, it was difficult to tell if they were still operating. On the left side of the grate was a door. Unfortunately, however, it was locked and refused to open. Jupe took a moment to examine the left side of the room. Next to the wall was a set of stairs, leading downwards. Standing guard at the top of the stairway, however, was a large iron gate. Reboting as it was, the gate seemed to be a sort of... that could be opened, unlike the metal grate that bisected the room. With luck, Junpei hoped, he might be able to get it open. The female symbol. Wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Snake, naturally, was somewhat more sure. Ah, the Venus symbol, I imagine. Do you recall the similar symbols near the large and central stairway? They reference many of the solar bodies. Sun. Saturn. Earth. And so as you can see, that one is likely not the woman's symbol, but a Venus symbol. So I assume. While they had been discussing the symbols, Jupe now realized that Seven had slipped away. His absence now felt Snake and Junpei turned to look for their missing companion. There. Seven had left them to head down the hallway extending to the right of the stairs. Junpei grabbed Snake to lead him in the right direction, and they both headed off after Seven. Before long, the three of them stood in front of a door. It was a French door. Oui, oui, French door. <laughs> Sorry. Junpei tested the door and realized that unlike so many others they had encountered, it was unlocked. Almost as though he were afraid it would suddenly lock itself, Junpei threw the door open. He stepped inside. It only took a moment for Junpei to take in his new surroundings. Is this some kind of casino? Sure looks like one. Before Junpei could comment further, a noise from behind him made him turn around. Snake was shaking the door they'd just come through. As Seven and Junpei watched, he threw up his hands in frustration, then kicked the door for good measure. It looked as though they were once again locked in. There was no reason to panic, however. Even if the door had been left open, there was nowhere for them to go back there. They would have to find another way out. All right, guys, let's split up and search the room. Come on, no dawdling, let's go. Quickly now. Spurred to action by Seven's words, Junpei and Snake began to examine the room. Yeah. Alright, a second escape room. Sick. Let's give it a go then, shall we? Sweet, so this is the casino. Got our lovely card tables, a bar, a something of some sorts, and the casino machines. Let's give it a go. Oh, hey. There's a card on this table. A, the five of spades. Oh. Neat. Mm, there's nothing left on the table anymore. All right, good to know. A square poker table. Nothing on it though. How about this bar over here? Oh, we got another card. Hmm? A playing card. Hey, the four. That's a lot of expensive glasses. Even cheap drinks taste great out of glasses like these. Sick. Junpei, I found this on the counter. Feels like a playing card. Hey, thanks, Snake. Seven of spades. All spades so far. Well, 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 would you look at that? Somebody left a couple bottles of booze here. 
Don't mind if I do. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh, that hits the spot. Feels like my throat's burning. Damn, he really drank it. We know how long that's been there for. Man, counter's pretty well polished. Well, neat. Anything with that? Nope, can't even click it. All right. Pop on around then. Anything of note over here? That square table. Looks like a Mahjong table. Hmm, do you play Mahjong 7? Uh, maybe? I don't remember exactly, but I do remember a couple hands and some of the rules. So I figure I must have played it at some point. Excellent. Once we vacated this vessel, I would just like to play you in a game. Can you, uh, play? So long as you tell me which tiles I'm eliminating, yes. I believe I have at least enough skill to defeat an amateur. However, I must ask you to remove the red tiles when we play. Huh? So I don't play Mahjong, so I don't... I don't get that joke. Feel free to comment below if you do get that joke. <laughs> All right, let's check this spot out. At least this one isn't lit like the rest of the first class cabin. Maybe that's why I feel a little chilly in here. Hey, well first there's a playing card right there. Hmm? Didn't think I'd find a card here. Ooh, a six, sick. Now then, if we flip this on, some symbols. Hey! Wait, those two lights turned on. I think I heard something from the bottom of the fireplace. What was that? I heard something down there. All right, so also we have a club, a diamond, and a heart, it looks like. Hey, we got a coin bag. Very nice, very nice. Mess with this. All right, let's drop the coin into the coin slot. Come on, you little bastards. I only need one of you. Sweet. All right, now let's spin the roulette. And it was club diamond heart. Hey, look at that. Seven, seven, seven. Ah, yes, seven, 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 or seven seventy-seven. I think I heard something unlock in there. Impressive, Junpei. It appeared to unlock now. There's something akin to a drawer in the bottom part of this machine. Yes, that is a pickup drawer for dividend. Probably the lock to the drawer got unlocked. Please open it if you would. Sick. We get a. Hmm. What is this? Is there something in there? Oh uh, yeah, playing card. And this. A key with the Venus symbol on it. Excellent, Junpei. I'll be able to get open the gate. We just need to figure out how to get out of this room. Correct? Come on, Junpei, hurry up. And he's off. A playing card and a Venus key. Better put the key in my pocket for later. That's for this card. We got the two. So now that gives us the two, the four, the five, the six, and the seven. So we're missing the three, eight, nine. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, the three, excellent. Wow, this place is like super amazing. What's this place for? Really for playing uh, Bakra. It looks a little off though. Yeah, it looks like it's the middle of the table. There's something mounting on it, see? Suddenly, Seven began to speak. Ah, Bakra. You ever played before, Junpei? Junpei shook his head. He barely even heard of the game. All right then, how about I explain the rules to you a bit? See, poker is kind of like an unusual game. You get the banker and the player, and the whole point is to guess which one's gonna win. Whether the banker or player wins all depends on their hands. The way each hand works is different from other games too. See, you take the number from the ones place after you add up all the values of the cards. Whoever gets the number closest to nine wins. If your number is smaller than your opponent, you lose. And that's it. That's the explanation. Got it? Well, actually, there's a lot more to it than that. Strategy, details, that sort of stuff. But what I just told you sums up the core of the game pretty well. A single digit is some of all the cards you have. The strongest hand is a 9. And the weakest hand is a 0. You just ignore the number of the 10th spot. You get it? He hadn't asked for it, but Seven's explanation, rushed though it has been, was helpful. Although he had only half understood most of it, Junpei now felt he had some grasp on how to gain victory in a game of backgammon. Or Bakra, sorry, backgammon, goodness gracious. However, Junpei had no way of knowing if the puzzle at the Bakra table in front of them had made use of those rules, and if they did, in what way. No problem, he told himself. He would simply have to try everything he could think of. Feeling more confident, if only slightly, Junpei approached the table. 
All right, so we got an eight, it looks like, in here. Hey, Seven, are we really supposed to play Bakra? It's Bakra Table. What the hell is she supposed to do? Um, nah, stop worrying about it. It's real simple. What's the opponent's hand? Uh, well, there's an eight in the glass case here. All right, then that's your opponent's number. If that's the case, what three cards do we need to play to get that number, or better? Well, th three cards? There are a couple of indents with white lines on them, right? Those mean we gotta put down three cards. So, place three cards here and defeat the opponent's eight. That's what I gotta do, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Something tells me that those aren't the only rules. All right, well, let's give it a shot. Before I start, better make sure I've got the rules straight. There are three empty indentations. One, two, three. They're French doors, after all. <laughs> I just gotta pick cards and play them. I figure if I put them in the right spots, something ought to happen. All right, let's give this a try. So I got to make nine somehow. So we'll start with just adding up. Two plus three is five plus four. Oh, that's nine. Oh, sick. Right off the bat. Boom. Hey, we got it. All right, if I just put down these three cards. Yes, it opened for me. Great. You did it, Junpei. Think it's telling us to take the eight card? Come on, let's grab it. All right, we'll get it. All right, let's take this card. Sweet, now we got the eight. Now, there wasn't like a ton else to go. Oh, over there. There's something at the wall. Sweet. Here's the card slot. Looks like we need to put a playing card in here. All right, let's give this a shot. So we got the ace. So I assume we want the eight then for this lock. Hey, look at that. Ah, oh, no, there's more. And in you go. Hey, all right, it opened up. Hmm, seems to have another device to contend with, yes? There are three slots in this one. All right, let's give it a go. Let's see, three slots for cards. There's a nine right below them. So that probably means we gotta make a nine with three cards we just put in the slots, right? Uh, just like we did over at the Bakra table. All right, let's give it a shot. Well, I just have three cards left, so we're gonna go for it. Hey, so good it opened twice. All right, so put the cards we had left in the slots. What happens now? Is that, ah, oh, yes, I did hear something from the exit. Excellent work, Junpei. Wonderful. Seems the exit is unlocked. Let's go. Well, you heard him. Let's get on out of here. All right, let's go. Woohoo! Two. Jupe and his companions ran out of the casino and into a large open room. A room, in fact, they'd already been in once before. There was little surprise to them there. They already knew that their next step had to be. The iron gate still stood in place, locked tight and blocking the stairway. In the center of the gate was the keyhole engraved with the Venus symbol. This time over, Jupe had the Venus key in his pocket. Wasting no time, he pulled it out and shoved it into the keyhole. He turned it. With the distinctive sound of metal on metal, he felt the lock click open. All right, let's get this thing open. No problem, let me help you with this one. Jupe grabbed the handle on the left side and Seven took the handle on the right. On Jupe's signal, they both pushed and the gate creaked open. Woohoo! We got through a door. Hmm, sounds as though you've opened it. You should be able to reach Sea Deck now, I imagine. Snake, are you gonna be all right? I mean, the stairs? Please, do not do yourself the embarrassment of underestimating me. I would be unlikely to trip even if I were running backwards. Uh, good to hear. Let's move. At Seven's words, they leapt onto the stairs and jogged quickly down them. In no time at all, they found themselves on sea deck. Jupe ran down the stairs a little further, in hopes of checking on the deck below. When he reached the water, he called back to Snake and Seven. Just what I thought. The D deck is completely underwater, uh, just like the bottom of the central staircase. The surface of the water below them was flat, like a mirror. That it had not changed too greatly since they'd last seen it was a great relief. Jupe quickly retraced his steps and headed back to C deck. In front of the stairs were a pair of elevators. They appeared to be identical to the ones from the upper floor. Between them, attached to the wall, was another card reader. 
And next to that was another strange symbol. Hey, check it out. It's a symbol for Lotus. What? See, it's a woman symbol. And then it's got devil horns, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. No two ways about it. That was a pretty good one, kid. Seven hustled Junpei's hair in what he likely thought to be a friendly manner. Junpei, however, feared his neck might break. Even though it was clear, Seven had kept his strength in check. Thankfully, Snake interrupted. After Jun Junpei's observation, he'd gone over to examine the card reader. Hmm, this is the Mercury symbol. The marks you mistook for horns are the stylized version of Wings and the Staff of Hermes. Wings and a staff, huh? So she beats you with the staff until you die and go to heaven? Sounds like Lotus, all right. <laughs> Seven snook Junpei's head even more vigorously, and the younger man began to feel as though his brain were being jostled about inside his skull. He began to feel rather ill. Mm, unless we activate the device, I doubt the elevator will function. In other words, we gotta find a key card with the Mercury symbol on it. So I would assume. They decided to leave the elevators alone for the time being and headed back to the stairs. To the left was another hallway. There were a great many doors lining both sides of the hallway. They seemed to stretch on forever, and all three men suddenly felt very small. Oh shit, we're not gonna have enough time to check all these, are we? Maybe we can come back here later. Let's check out the other side. They turned around and went back the way they'd come. To the right of the stairs, another hallway stretched out, reaching deep into the balls of the ship. After a few moments of moving briskly down the hallway, they emerged into an area roughly the same size and shape as the one on top of the stairs. On the left side of the room were four French doors. So let's open them. Junpei nodded and grabbed the one closest to him. He gave it a small tug and felt it move. It was unlocked. Thrilled to have found another unlocked door, he threw it open. Jubei didn't know what to make of what he saw. He simply stood, unable to speak. Seven's eyes opened wide and his mouth gaped. After a few long moments, Seven at last managed to speak. Hey, wh what is this place? A massive room stretched out in front of them. More of a cavern than a room. Its vastness was oppressive, and it bore down on Seven and Junpei. It was not empty, however. The entire room was filled with lines upon lines of beds. They were simple things, little more than pipe and thin mattresses. Is this a hospital? He had at last been able to put a name to the harsh scent that pervaded the room. The room was full of the clean smell of antiseptic solution. In the center of the room were shelves stacked with medicine and a number of medical devices, the function of which Junpei did not know. More importantly, however, on the back wall of the room were four doors. Three of them were emblazoned with a large, single-digit numbers made of thick red paint. The door on the left was labeled three. The second door on the left had no number, but the third had been given a seven. The door on the right bore an eight. There could be no doubt they were numbered doors. It did strike Junpei as strange, however, that the door between three and seven should be blank. What, he wondered, could it mean? Mm, let's take a look at those doors. Yeah, good idea. The three of them headed their way towards the beds, towards the back of the room. Upon reaching them, they proceeded to investigate each door in turn, but to no avail. Yep, locked, just like I thought. Naturally. After all, there are rules to the notary game, and to allow these doors to open easily would violate those rules. Unless we can authenticate ourselves with the red, the number doors will... Whoa, 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 check this out! Suddenly, Seven spoke up, interrupting Snake. Look at the red. There's nothing on it. Uh-huh. Hmm. Don't you remember the red back at the main staircase? If there weren't anyone in it, it would say vacant on the little screen, remember? Oh, yeah, you're right. But this one. There's nothing. Right? You think it's broken? Only one way to find out. Jim and the others put their hands on the panel, 
but nothing happened. The red refused to change. I tried pulling the lever, and still nothing. As they soon discovered, it wasn't only the red on door 8 that seemed to be malfunctioning. The red on door 7, and the red on door 3, none of them worked. What, they wondered, did it mean? Hey, gotta be broken. Man, that bastard. I didn't think Zero was the kind of guy who'd screw around with something like this. Whoa, whoa, Zero's been prepared for everything so far. And you're saying he's gonna make a mistake now? Well, that's the only thing I could think of. This thing ain't working at all. While Jupane 7 talk, Snake busied himself examining the red. After a time, he lowered his hands and spoke. Hmm, it seems as if some internal hardware has been removed. Internal hardware? This is, that's what I said. Take a look at the underside of this red, if you please. Junpei obliged and bent over to look at the underside of the device. A long, thin slit ran along the bottom of it. As he looked harder, he realized it was more of a slot than a slit, and that it was clearly meant to accommodate some manner of electronical device. But the two reds were the same. Something had clearly been removed from all three of them. I get it. So the reds aren't working because someone's pulled out their guts. Hmm, so I would assume. But why? And who? I mean, it doesn't really make sense. I have no idea. Why on earth would I know something like that? Just then, they heard the sound of the door opening. Three of them turned and saw... Akane! Yes, alright, so with that, we've now met back up with the other group, and we shall leave it here. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I think after this, we'll jump ahead a little bit, since we're going to see the same section we saw before, where uh, we met up with the other team, look around. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!